What's going on guys? I gotta get going. I am super late. So right now, I am uh, headed to a friend's house and I'm gonna be taking the GSR transmission with me. The one that I opened up yesterday that you guys probably saw last week, uh, Friday's video. I was gonna reassemble it, but that bearing is messed up. And um, he's actually gonna be taking that transmission to Red Zone where we tune our cars. And Guy is gonna be putting the gear stack into another transmission. Anyways, so um, I didn't reseal it, but I am gonna be trading it for a turbo for the B20. When I do go boost, I think it'll be a good trade because I don't need this transmission and he upgraded turbo. So he can make use of this, I can make use of that. Let's go. All right, guys, so I'm out here at uh, Luis's house, and um, a turbo that we're gonna be trading for is right here. It's a Garrett GT28, yep. and uh, it's ball bearing. You made how much on this turbo? 370 on E85. 370 on E85, and um, I think this is gonna be perfect for the build. And the reason why you pull this off is because he upgraded to a GT30. Yep. You mind if I show them the build? Go for it. So this is a hatchback he's had for a cool minute, and um, it is a single cam turbo. It's built, piston it's rods, rods yeah. and um, you know it, it's it, it was it was running at one point in time. Yeah. I know that because we saw it out in Antioch. But uh, it makes some pretty dope power for being a single jingo. And um, you know this car has not been dyno with the 35R. Not yet. Not it's gonna be making a lot more power, bro. And uh, you know it's it's a very nice setup. This guy, what is this? This is not spooling. Uh, yeah, it was. Oh, okay, this is a yeah. spooling manifold. It's got some Kelly built, um, you know, charge piping and stuff. And uh, it's pretty sleek. Everything's all murdered out a little bit. Chrome is like kind of give the engine bay a little bit of pop. But, you know what I mean? This car has been sleeping, but it is going to be making its debut soon, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, spring Jam. Spring Jam. Oh, that's actually coming up like less than a month away. I'm probably going to be out there as well, too. But, you know, I'm not 100% sure with it yet. But, um,. If my car don't make it out there, I'll still physically be out there. So we're trading the turbo for the transmission. He can make use of that because one of his transmission is bad and he can use the gear stack and the main and counter shaft. And like I mentioned, I can use the turbo for the B20 build. So hopefully it works out. So I left Luis's house and uh, I'm here back at Alex's and the Lexus is up and running boys. So two days ago, we picked up the Lexus. I dropped it off back over here. Well did the... Uh, <laughs> You can see it right here. We welded the spindle just so we can get it off the trailer. And uh, the next day, he went to the junkyard, got the control arm, got the rods, got the axle, got the um, spindle. Hey, did you get a subframe too? Was that okay? Subframe was good. And upon doing all of that, he found out that this has an LSD transmission. So he's actually, we're supposed to be going for a test drive right now just to see and make sure everything's good. Uh, we need a flange for the resonator so we could put the exhaust on because they cut it off right there And uh, then we're gonna take it to smog and build a drift missile That LSD live boys that's gonna be a fun ass build. I've been back home for a little while now and uh, Luis didn't need the um, inner and outer case because he's gonna be using the gear stack and stuff in his, you know, his ITR transmission, which is why he needed another one. But I have the turbo over there and uh, it works out. All right, guys. So I started um, tearing this apart like an hour ago, but then I, I had no clue what I was doing. I've never touched a rear hub before. So this is all new to me. And I had to go to Harbor Freight. I took off and I went to go get some torque bits to uh, take off these bolts because like I said, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I figured um, this was stuck here. Try to remove this, but apparently you can't remove this unless you press out the hub and bearing. But I was able to get the um, drum backing plate off by just cutting it. And I'm not going to need this piece because my other trailing arm has it already. And all of the uh, new stuff that came off this trailing arm is in this box. So I can use it for when I get the trailing arms ready for the wagon. But I cut that off and now I could uh, just 
you know bolt this back up pretty much and um, you know start planning out the brackets and stuff to make this caliper rear disc brake conversion work so now that I know what I have to do I'm gonna put you guys on the laps of me removing that side right there and uh, we're pretty much going to continue this tomorrow so I can show you guys more of the DIY um, rear disc conversion on your drums in the daylight so see you guys tomorrow ML, how long you sleep in the house, huh? You, what are you doing? What's going on, guys? It is several days ahead since the last clip and uh, took on some jobs during the weekend and I kind of put off the rear disc brakes uh, for a little bit, but we are back. And right now I apologize for not uploading on Monday because I want to stay in order. So I have to finish the disc brakes before we release the video of that wagon right there. So again, um, what I've been doing is tinkering with one side and show you guys how I came about um, doing so on the other trailing arm. And I kind of figured out how I'm going to do the disc brake conversion and I'll show you guys in a second here. I'm going to set up the table, the lights and everything, move the jig out. I'm going to eat real quick. I also went to the PO box to ship out some built to drive stickers. Thank you guys for all the support. I'm pretty much sold out and uh, hopefully by the time you guys see this video I'll have more up you'll know if there's a link in the description to my PayPal if there's not then we're still working on it but you guys murdered it the first and half second day on the the orders and all the stickers has been shipped so uh, I truly appreciate you guys support on that but I went to the PO box to drop the last of it and um, there was a mail there so I don't know what they did in the mail they kind of somebody got hungry or something along the way but <laughs> this came from Joshua out in Tennessee I believe and it says right here in the back keep up the great work always go with your heart cannot wait to see what you build next actually I'm supposed to be go checking out a car today Monday and um, I don't know yet we'll we'll figure it out when we get to it but not in this video because today is disc break video so I'm gonna open this up real quick and see what we have inside so we have a note it says what's up young static I have to say I really like your work I have never built a car but you have really showed me anything can be done with just jumping in and figuring it out yourself I plan to start an LS boosted project or a k24 project with it being my first what you think would be the easiest planning to put it in EF if I can find one going to start it at tax time <laughs> let me know what you think your stuff is great keep it up PS love your Mazda truck from Joshua and uh, right here we have some monster stickers and um, I am definitely gonna find some use for this uh, you know I'm probably gonna I don't know stick it on one of my cars or something each each of my cars one two three four five one two three four it's gonna be a fifth one soon who knows but anyways Joshua thank you for the stickers man I appreciate it thank you for the note thank you for uh, taking the time to send this to me I am definitely gonna have the truck up on the channel soon guys I don't want to start with too much project into next year as much as I want to build another chassis uh, you know just for a change on the channel I want to finish that car sell this car finish this car and I want to bring this truck aboard before I start on something new this is my uncle's car that uh, he bought brand new back in the days when he first you know came out here to where we live and um it's been his project it's been his high school and he got married got kids and i took over the car it's been sitting here since 2009 non-op and um you know i want to bring it on the channel soon i want to show you guys what i'm going to be doing with it as far as building it but uh the time for it will come very soon so hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see future updates of the mazda b2000 truck 
I'm sure you guys won't be disappointed. My dad's sleeping in the passenger side right there. I'm not sure if I if I can start cutting right now. So Friday, I um, off camera kind of tinkered with the caliper to uh, kind of figure out what I got to do to make this uh, fit permanently in place. And uh, I have a bright idea on how I'm gonna go about doing so. As you can see, a piece of the RTA is cut out right there. The caliper was sticking up where the brake pads was still like half an inch away from its clamping surface. So what I did was right there, I shaved down the um, tab for the cable bracket. That allowed me to push the caliper more inward, which then aligned the caliper uh, pad surface to the rotor exactly where it's supposed to be at. And then uh, this is pretty much how I want it. And then I went ahead and made some templates of flanges that I'm gonna be cutting out. This one goes on the bottom, which bolts up to this flange. This one right here is going to be welded to this guy and then these two tabs is where the calipers can be mounted to. Now I'm going to be using this template like excess pieces because I am going to be cutting out this um, big old jig because this thing is super heavy so I'm going to knock off the extra stuff so I could make it easier to maneuver around but also use this quarter inch steel to make my two flanges one and two left and right. Drill my holes out, align it on there and then pretty much you know get this to fit correctly with the caliper in place and then weld these two together so that way we can get the caliper permanently at home i'm only going to show it to you guys on one side because it's identical process to do the opposite side so i mean the grinding part is going to take the longest but um i want to at least cut one out so i can show you how to do the one side get them both done so we can get it to paint and finalize it with the uh, protein bushing so we can get these ready to be installed in the car all right guys so we lost a lot of daylight joe came here with cat to pick up the wagon that is gone she did a one two three right here it was so solid and then after that, we had Chewy come by right after Joe and Kat left, and we were kind of hanging out a little bit. We did get a restock on sticker guys, so um, they are ready to be purchased again. So if you guys want some built to drive stickers, information will be in the description below. And then when Chewy left, well, Alex showed up. So uh, Alex came by because he's actually picking up a set of stickers for his cars. And uh, we were just kind of chit-chatting a little bit, but I did get one plate cut out. I still need the second piece to complete one tonight. And um, I just drilled out the hole to uh, get this piece bolted up to that flange and uh, just get an idea on how this is going to work out because, you know, this is a little bit thicker than the paper, obviously, and um, it was binding with the caliper. So I had a trim to, uh, you know, get it to fit. So now that this is up in its place, I have to cut out that second piece, which is this guy that is going to sit right here and be welded to the first plate so that way we can mount the caliper up in the place and uh, see how everything works out. So I'm going to get started with that because uh, we are losing daylight so I want to at least show you guys like I've mentioned one side done. Super duper cold and I cannot I cannot feel my uh, my toes but <laughs> I I man I, I don't know it's, it feels super late but it's only 6 30 and this piece right here to cut out was super complicated because of how many curvatures is on that piece right here and literally took me like 45 minutes to cut that section out cut it in you know pieces you know small pieces to break off like right here and then using a flap disc to get all my curvatures but we have it done nonetheless and uh let me show you guys right here real quick so right here this is the piece i cut out and i drill out the hole measure 100 times and drill once and uh, we got a perfect fit so pretty much that bracket goes over the first bracket and the curvatures this right here goes over that flange like near snugged right uh-huh and then uh you know align my brake pad to the mating surfaces of the rotor right edge to edge and all i got to do now is tack it into place remove these caliper bolts remove that bolt down there and we could uh fully weld it 
and permanently bolt this into place. We are uh, making progress here and um, I'm definitely going to take some pictures to show you guys, you know, like the flanges and everything that I made at the end of the video. So you guys can get an idea on how I went about doing this. But that's pretty much the whole point of this video anyways, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up this metal real quick, set up my welding machine and start welding. Another update here for you guys before I assembled this. So the two plates is welded together. What I did was I mocked it up on here and then uh, made sure the pad contacted rotor was correct, like I mentioned in the last clip. And then I uh, tacked it in place, removed it completely off the jig, and then I welded all the way across. And um, right here, I was supposed to, you know, use my TIG welder and weld that nice and flat, but now it's all, you know, bulky because MIG welding and the reason why I didn't take it was because I don't have argon so what I had to do was I had to ground it down a little bit so that way this would sit flush up on here and then uh, because it was already flush before and I can't really fit the flap disc in there to uh, get it nice and you know smoothing out I had to notch the flange now this is not a big deal this is actually just separated from this guy but this piece right here I notched it where I welded it on the flange one two and three i just kept like grinding it down until this sat up flush uh bolting it in place so right now i'm going to bolt it in place and show you the full assembly of this diy bracket and how freely the rotor moves on its own everything is hand tight because all of this is coming back off anyways for paint but here it is guys one side is done it looks like it's wobbly a little bit because there's nothing underneath here but i can assure you guys this is rotating straight and freely and uh that's pretty much it the last thing i got to do is the bracket for the e-brake cables and um, obviously this right here is hitting pretty much all of this and what i'm going to do is i am going to uh shorten it and then i'm going to put spacers underneath it so that way it can bring the bracket up higher to clear this so that way we can route the cable into the hole and then typically how it goes into the e-brake cable so um i'm gonna find that real quick and uh i'm just gonna go ahead and do it and show you guys what i did as far as doing it here we are guys we are done with one rear disc brake conversion and uh this is what i did as far as the e-brake cable bracket went pretty much I uh, shaved down a little bit for this corner because it's literally like resting right up on it and um, I'm gonna shave it down a little bit more just so like it's not touching but even if it is it'll be okay um, I can't find the piece that I cut off but what I did was I pretty much shortened that right there about about half an inch don't quote me on it but as a reference half an inch and uh, pretty much welded it back together and then I used some nuts in the back uh, right there at the bottom to bolt this uh, bracket higher to clear this guy and uh, I'm gonna be changing that out to some round tubing when I go pick up some from Home Depot or something later tomorrow this week whatever but it's mounted higher just so it can clear this but as long as the cable is in place right now i don't have another bolt because this one is too long and then when you uh use a longer bolt this actually touches the uh trailing arm at the bottom and lifts the whole caliper up that's a no-no so right now it only has one bolt in there but hopefully i'll try to get another bolt to length and uh get that bracket um you know permanent fixed in place but typically that's how my cable is going to be ran this is going to be tucked up underneath hopefully this guy doesn't touch the rotor but nonetheless that right there is my rear disc conversion this video has kind of been all over the place because i initially started the first um recording friday which was three days ago and um you know, I'm finally getting around to kind of showing you guys how I went about making my rear disc conversion on my wagon, four wheel drive, rear trailing arms, and um, hopefully it turns out well. We won't know until we throw it in the car. So I'm going to be, um, you know, spinning the rotors and try to, you know, use this and then just buy new pads pretty much. All that's left to do is the other side, paint, you know, bushing and um, 
buy all the materials I need to do the rear end diff conversion and then we'll flip the car around and get down with it. But as far as right now goes, I hope you guys got a you know good glimpse on how I went about doing so and hopefully when you guys do for yours, you guys uh, take your sweet time and get the same results that I did, if not better. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. And also we got more Built to Drive stickers in stock. So if you guys are trying to rock the Built to Drive stickers, information in the description below will show you guys how to achieve one or more stickers and uh, for those who bought the first batch again I want to thank you guys for the support you guys killed it the first day and I pretty much had to place another order the next day so that pretty much wraps it up so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video peace